So to power your wrap wrap printer, I hear that you will need about six amps for the actual um, motors and electronics and extruder and everything, and then uh, about eight maybe for the heated bed. Uh, so in other words, we need a power supply that can provide 14 amps at 12 volts. And um, even if your power supply is rated at 200 watts, like this guy is, notice how on the specs it says um, the output 200 watts max we've got 5 volts at 18 amps ooh more than we need but then we go to 12 volts 6 amps and that's only enough to run the printer itself without a high temperature on the heated bed so this power supply will not work so I think with this rep wrap application you're not going to look at the total watts you're going to look at how many amps it can provide on the 12 volt output this power supply, on the other hand, it says the max output is only 250. Okay, so it doesn't look like it's a far jump from the other power supply, right? But it can provide 14 amps on its 12 volt output, and that's what we need. So this power supply should work. Now, power supplies will not just run by themselves as I found out tonight because they the computer has to turn it on right because you don't want the power supply like running all the time so the power supply is on standard by until the computer turns it on and basically there's one wire which in this case is green that when connected to ground will activate the power supply I have a little diagram here showing the pinout. So we've got this right here, PSON, so power supply on wire. To turn that on, to turn the power supply on, you just need to connect that to any of the grounds, any of the black. But not all power supplies uh, fit that diagram. For instance, this one right here, the diagram has the power, the um, turn on pin as the fourth from the bottom over there, but this one is actually reversed so you're basically looking for a green wire which is the industry standard and that's your turn on wire and yes I tested this and it works turns on otherwise it doesn't this is pretty messy and we want to clean this up so what you should probably do is get yourself a simple little switch like this that you can mount on the inside and then switch two terminals in this case so that you'll, when you switch it on, you'll connect the green wire with the black wire, with some black wire. And then that will activate the power supply. And to turn it off, you just do that. This power supply does not come with a standard switch. So this is more important to turn the thing off. Otherwise it will be running all the time. And you probably don't want that for your RepRap printer. You probably just want to say, okay, goodbye RepRap, and turn it off. So, um, now interesting thing about these wires, on my particular power supply, these wires are 18 gauge, and um, all the yellow ones are connected to the 12 volt output, the red ones are connected to the 5 volt output, the orange ones are connected to the 3 volt output, and the black ones are all ground. I think this is industry standard. So what this means is I only need the yellow wires and the black wires and the green wire and I can kind of cut all the wires otherwise off in the case so how many amps can we actually push safely through one of these wires well it turns out I've got a table here uh, where is it And for 18 gauge wire like I have here, about 7 amps. For 16 gauge, 10 amps. And for 
10 gauge or 12 gauge uh, no 14 gauge 15 amps now you have to remember that it also depends on the length of the wire so if the wire is really long like 50 feet or something the how many amps you can draw through it safely are is going to be different if, if it's really short like this but to be safe we'll assume that we can only pull 7 amps through each wire now the solution is this little 4 port four plug right here as you can see in the schematic which is going to be correct for this one it's got two 12 volt outputs and two grounds so that's perfect that's all we need and that will be 14 amps easily see all those orange wires they're all connected in a nice little bundle all the black wires they're basically in the same spot same with all the yellow wires they're all connected to the same spot and the did I just mention the red wires? I don't know. Whereas the green wires, the green wire and the blue, you know, gray one and the blue, they're all connected to different parts. So it is pretty. I mean, I could take the circuit board out and actually look, but from what I can tell from looking underneath and from looking at the top, it, it's pr I'm pretty much sure that they're all connected. And why wouldn't they be? I mean, why would you have second separate circuits for each wire? They should all just be connected. So here's the idea. You just, um, this is where the orange wires used to be, and I'm not going to need those since those are 3 volts. Just cut them off right at the board level if you can. That will save you from doing any shrink wrap. Okay, so I've uh, left the green wire. Left one of the Molex connectors on here because I might, you know, might need an, an additional output some other time in case I'm testing another printer or something. And the... Uh, the um thing we're, we're gonna actually use now so as long as your connections are pretty much guaranteed as you can pretty much tell that they're never gonna touch anything like these black wires are cut off right here even if they did touch anything they just touch the insulation of these capacitors or this blue wire here right there it's i mean that one's a little more concerned about but i still don't think it could touch anything live or this yellow wire right here I mean you know it's it's not really gonna go anywhere so you don't have to put I mean if you want to go ahead but you don't have to put shrink wrap on anything that you've cut off that's just obviously not like and those red those orange wires there that's obviously not gonna touch anything so you don't have to worry about that so just you know try to cut off as low as possible you don't have to worry about shrink wrapping but you need to save this green wire because this will turn on the power supply without it you cannot and then I'm going to need to get another, rid of another one of these Molex connected things. So let me do that and I'll be back. So now I've got what I'm going to use for the rep wrap. And then something extra just in case I need it. And that's like 12 volts. So now I'm just going to wire up. Oh, I shouldn't have cut one of those ground wires. Yeah, so next time uh, when you do this, leave one of those ground wires to... Um, wire with this green one. I don't know why I didn't. I didn't think about that. I guess it's, I was in a hurry. You probably should have a little checklist of what you're trying to save, just so you don't cut anything by accident. For this particular type of switch, that little groove there aligns with this little plate thing, like so, so that. Well, at least it's supposed to make it so that it cannot turn. But this one's a pretty bad example, obviously. But supposedly, you cannot turn. So if you have one that actually works right, that has one of these um, things that actually has a good nub there, you would want to make a little divot next to your hole so that it will kind of uh, rest there and so your switch won't turn so you know which way is off and which way is on. So you just drill a hole there. So there's the switch, and I just reused the leftover green wire, and I'm going to solder that to the massive black ones I cut off. And that will be that. And then I'll just put it in the hole and screw it on. I guess I'm going to be extra paranoid and just make sure that nothing rips out. Still secured there and there. 
in there. And then I put some electrical tape around the connection there because it's not very strong and it's kind of all over the place. And there I've got my switch. So I'm going to close the whole case back up and test it. If I flip the switch on, which is supposed to be up, and nothing happens, the fan doesn't turn, then that's a bad sign. Something's wrong with that. But um, if it does, oh, well, we'll see. Okay, well, I sure uh, got rid of a lot of wire, but cleaning it up and everything doesn't matter if it doesn't work. So, I use the cord.